All right, guys, so I'm coming back at you today with another video. Um, I know it's been a little while since I made a, a long form video like this, but like I stated on the last one, if I can do one a month, that's about all I'm going to shoot for because I'm just busy and don't really have a whole lot of time to drag a bunch of knives out and talk about them for a while. I've got a lot of projects and things like that that need to be done, and so it's kind of silly to... Uh, be trying to do YouTube videos when I've got a lot more important things that need to be done but I had a little bit of time today we're kind of just taking it easy this evening and so I've had something on my mind lately um, and I may I may get known as the guy that always has an opinion or something or always ruffling people's feathers but this is just something that's been on my mind for a while and um, I just kind of wanted to throw this out there so I could get y'all's opinion um, but basically I'm starting to feel like when it comes to case knives on YouTube um, well let me, let me back up and just say I'm a huge case fan I would call myself a case collector because I have far more case knives than anyone could ever use on a regular basis and I've even gone as far as to collect specifically copper locks because I just love this pattern I love the the style um, I like the fact that this these are lock backs and um, I'm just really enamored with the, the copper lock pattern full-size copper locks I really don't care for minis but full-size copper locks um, I just love them maybe it's got something to do with the fact that my dad carried one of these when I was young if I put the years together um, my dad must have had like a early one like a 97 or 98 because I remember being a kid and my dad having a full-size copper lock so with that out of the way I I'm gonna be the guy that kind of always tries to defend WR case and sons um, I'm gonna try not to have anything bad to say um, and with that being said I am most definitely not blind to the fact that they have been putting out some really hideous quality knives lately um, I'll go ahead and admit that I don't feel comfortable buying used, I mean, I'm sorry, I don't feel comfortable buying new case knives from an online dealer because I know that when they get that order, they grab the first box on the top of the stack, they stick it in the envelope or the box, and it comes to you and you just hope and pray that when you get it, it's not totally full of gaps and, and all the typical things that, um, some of these some of these knives have um so with that being said um it's getting to the point to where i feel like collectors and when i say that because i just admitted to being a collector myself but when i say collectors i'm talking about the guys that literally buy every new release and every time something new comes out they grab it and then they're basically just putting them on a shelf or, or sometimes maybe they even put them right back in the box and then they get put away and then i see these youtube videos from the guys that i follow and i, I see the the thumbnail picture and um you know the title and everything and i think this is going to be a good video i'm going to click on this and watch it because i like case knives and then i click on it and it almost immediately, almost every time, it turns into an absolute nitpicking bitch fest of every single microscopic flaw that they can find wrong with this knife. Um, I'm gonna show some knives while I talk. Um, I get it, guys. I really get it. Um, it's disheartening to spend your hard-earned money and listen, no, nobody understands hard-earned money more than I do. I haven't had a day off since the 4th of July, 
and I didn't have one off before then in a long time. I work all the dang time. My money means so much to me that I literally won't even stop and buy a drink at the store sometimes because I'm sitting there thinking, no, I'm not gonna stop in there and spend five or six dollars on a drink and a, you know, maybe a bag of chips. I will talk myself out of it because I just, I just don't like to waste money. So to spend hard earned money on something and, and you're expecting it to be perfect, I get it, okay? I'm not gonna sit here and say that y'all do not have a valid point. But what I am gonna say is, it gets exhausting. It really gets exhausting to click on a video that you think you're gonna enjoy. And about three minutes in, somebody goes, well, it's got a gap. I sure wish Case was watching my video because it's got a little gap over here and the blades aren't quite centered. Oh my God, they need to tighten up their QC. Like I get it, I really get it, but they're not watching your video. Um, I really don't think the people that run WR Case care that much. I've, um, I've made comments on their post on Instagram and they never respond. They never like the comment. They don't respond to anybody hardly. Um, they're just not a very um, engaging company when it comes to that stuff. Um, I see their little, their little, you know, videos and shorts and things on YouTube where they got that young guy and that girl, and they are always talking about the new, the new line of case knives, whatever the handle material, this, that, and the other. You can leave comments on that, and they never respond. They don't, they don't even acknowledge it, you know? They're not watching your video when you've got like 600 subs, you know what I mean? Um, so to get on YouTube and just put every single knife under a microscope and point out every flaw, like, who wants to watch that, you know? It's kind of like when you're a little kid and you're, and you're being ugly to somebody and your mom or your grandma or somebody says, hey, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. It's not that maybe you didn't have a point. Maybe little Johnny down the road is a little mean son of a gun, but it looks bad on the, the one talking about it if he's gonna turn around and do the same thing by talking about him. Anyway, try not to get off on a weird tangent here, but do y'all kind of get what I'm saying? Like when I first started to kind of like collect case knives, you know, um, I would post pictures. This was before I even put knife content on YouTube, but I would post pictures and put them on Instagram. And I would take a picture. The knife would look, you know, pretty good. I think it, you know, I'd be satisfied with it. And I'd post it. And people like, you know, Richter was one of the first ones I really engaged with on Instagram uh, concerning knives. And, um, it was always just like, hey man, I love that knife, you know, or, or uh, you know, great, great pick or whatever, something encouraging, you know. We never said, oh, hey, by the way, uh, that knife you posted, does it have gaps? Are the blades perfectly centered? You know, how's the grind? No, nobody ever got into that. It was just like, here's a picture of this knife. You either like it or you don't, you know. It's basically just more or less about the pattern, the color, Maybe it has a fancy shield, I don't know, but it seems like every time I click on a case video here lately, it's always a scrutinizing microscopic look at, does it have a flaw? Does it have a scratch? Oh my God, it's got a tiny scratch, you know? Oh, it's not sharp, and I don't know how to sharpen a knife, so I'm gonna complain about it. Um, you know, I get it maybe maybe you would expect a knife to come sharper than what these do a lot of case knives have a burr i've watched the video there's a video on youtube where you can basically take a tour of the uh the shop and they kind of take you through all the processes and they grind you know they grind these edges on a belt and so yeah if you if you get a little heavy handed on this side you're going to get a weird grind and i get it maybe they should step up and come up with a better way or um, just become better at their job. You know, I understand that part too because I'm expected to perform at my job at a certain level. If I was constantly spitting out crappy parts 
at the machine shop I work at, I'd get fired. Um, so I guess it boils down to WR Case's standards just aren't that high. Um, there's a guy that I used to watch on YouTube. He was one of the first that I started watching when I got interested in knives a lot. And uh, his channel was called The Slip Joint Guy. And a bunch of y'all may be going, oh yeah, I remember that. Um, he used to post uh, videos really regularly. And uh, he had GECs and he had um, Queens and Bokers. And he also uh, did case knives and he was an actual case dealer. I don't really know how an individual gets to be a case dealer, but he, he said he was a case dealer. And uh, he actually had conversations back and forth with some people at case over quality control and he didn't get anywhere with them he got absolutely nowhere with them they basically said hey uh blade centering yeah whatever as long as it falls down in the channel it's good um gaps basically if if the gap wasn't just you know big enough to slide a a, a, a business car through it's good when they complained about um, blade play, they told him that they literally take the knife like this, back and forth, back and forth, hey, it feels pretty solid, it's out the door. Um, Case pumps out so many more knives than any of these other businesses, these other companies, that I'm sure they just grab them up, box them up, send them out, you know? Um, you're not gonna get a GEC experience with a Case knife because there's just too many of them. Um, and I'm not an expert at this, like I, I get it. I'm, a, I'm just an observer like most of the rest of y'all. I don't, I've never been to the case factory and laid my eyes on anything personal, but I'm just saying they, they pump out so much product. Um, they pump out so much product that, um, it's just hard to keep up with it. I know when, when we get busy at work, um, a lot of times our quality starts to slip a little bit because you're just in a hurry and sometimes things just don't um, get caught or you're in such a rush to get something out the door that you might forget a little something. So it happens with everybody. And um, I just feel like I just feel like that, um, sorry, I had a distraction there. Um, <laughs> anyway, my, one of my parents was walking up and I was trying to signal to him that I was doing a video, but anyway, sorry about that. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, things just get missed when production is so high. And I'm sure that Case could back off on production and um, maybe tighten up on QC and it would make a lot of people happy. But as long as they're still selling knives to people that don't really pay attention to that kind of stuff, they're not going to change their policies, you know. Think about how many knives land in the hands of old people or older people that have been collecting knives for decades and they don't really pay attention to all the nitpicky little things that a lot of these younger guys do. When I bought my first case knife, it even came from eBay. It was a used knife. And um, I never even thought to look at the blade centering. I never even thought to check the back spring for gaps. Um, the one I bought that time had probably been sharpened by somebody. So I never thought to look at the blade grind or anything like that, you know. Um, heck, it even had scratches on the blade and I still didn't care. I just, I knew that I liked the knife. I liked the traditional look and the traditional feel of it. And um, I was I was excited with it. And by becoming a part of the community as it is, and everybody's like so critical over everything. Um, I realize this is probably getting boring if I'm just sitting here talking, but everybody has become so critical of everything that it makes it makes me critical and i get a knife and the first thing i do is go oh my god what do the back springs look like oh there's a little gap over there oh my gosh the blades oh that blade's almost touching oh this thing's a piece of junk how could they do that to me you know 
And so here I go again, uh, making a video, and I'm sure people are gonna say, oh yeah, that's great and all, but uh, I don't like spending $90 on a knife that uh, when I get it, it's all whacked out. And I get that, you know, I do. That's just, that's just everyday common sense. Nobody wants to have that experience. So that brings me to the second thing that I'd like to talk about. How are you buying your knives? Um, you know, here for a while, I have added a tremendous amount of knives to my copper lock collection. I think I'm up to 28 full-size copper locks because that's just how much I like them. Um, these right here are even duplicates. Uh, this is not the same snake skin and pig skin that you saw the other day. This is a duplicate or these two are duplicates, but I was off, I was um, offered up a trade for these knives. And even though I technically had these two colors already, I thought, man, these are nice examples. These are hard to come by. And I just would love to have these, you know? So I traded. I have a guy that I know and trust. And we actually met face to face the other day. It was a really great experience. We didn't get to spend a lot of time together because he was passing by where I work and uh but we met in the parking lot and we traded some expensive knives and um we shook each other's hand and we looked each other right in the face and and we built a we we built on to our friendship we already had and i'll always trade knives with this guy um and always feel good about it uh this one came from him too this is a uh case select case select copper lock right here um really really cool but anyway if you are going to sit on the recliner and constantly peruse Smoky Mountain Knife Works, Shepherd's Hills, uh, Red Hills, all those places, you're always just going to get whatever knife is laying on the top of the stack. And I know you can send them back and do all that stuff and maybe you'll get a better one the next time. But like, I have enjoyed the hobby so much more through either trading with somebody I trust or getting out and going to an antique store or um, a knife store, something of that nature. Um, and you get out there, flea markets is what I was thinking. You get out there, I bought this at a flea market, guys, for like $60. I don't think you'll go down to your local Ace Hardware and find a large saddle horn. I'm pretty sure these are in the vault. I mean, and being a huge knife like this, I highly doubt Case will ever produce these on a wide scale um this is obviously a two blader it's got that massive massive spay blade cotton sampler peanut butter spreader whatever you want to call it this big daddy's got half stops i'm off the off the frame sorry about that half stops i mean it's a hoss you're not going to find this on shepherd hills okay red hills isn't going to have it um so you get out and you find these gems and there's a story behind it. I, know, I can recall the very day and, and everything about purchasing this knife. I actually found this knife one weekend, really didn't have the $60 to spend, saved up a couple of weeks and went back and it was still there and I bought it. And I'll always have that story to tell. My tractor supply exclusive. I bought this new, but I bought it at tractor supply. I went in there. I said, hey, I'd like to look at a couple of these knives. And the guy went to digging through the case and he said, looks like that's the last one. So the literal display, the knife they had hanging on the display was the last one. It was this one. And look, it's perfect, guys. This is just as perfect as that three-bladed trapper I traded Big J. If y'all hadn't seen that video, go check that out on Big J's channel. We traded knives. I traded him a three-bladed hunter trapper that was absolutely 100% mint. I mean, they don't make them better than what that trapper was. Um, this one here is another good example. This one may not be flawless, but it's so close and it just looks so good. Look, these blades aren't centered. I don't care. I really don't. This thing is beautiful. The smooth bone, the big diamond shield, the transitions are great. It's perfect. I guess what I'm saying is to wrap this up, 
I just miss, I miss the days where people just got on here and said, hey, check out my new knife. This is a uh, royal blue trapper with the uh, American flag shield, you know, and you, you check it out and you look at it and they might tell you how long it is and, you know, how long the blade is and the cutting length and all that. And it's like, man, that's a good looking knife, you know, and you fiddle with it and you show it off and everybody says, oh man, I love that knife, you know, great score. And then that's it. You, you, you don't dissect it for 10 minutes and then say, I'm not going to fool with sending it back because that's just a headache. I guess I'll just deal with it. I don't know. I'm not going to tell anybody what to do. I made one controversial video already that uh, I think it struck a lot of nerves because I've seen several, I've seen several um, videos that I felt like were almost a response to that, even though no one's ever said that. Um, but I felt like it was a response and I, I talked to a few guys that gave me the idea that maybe a few people might have not cared for that video too much. But like, I'm a USA guy. I have a few German knives and I don't, I don't really support the China trade. If you don't like that, unsubscribe. I don't care. Um, I like USA made stuff. I like supporting America. Um, and that's just how it is. Like I said, if, if you don't like that about me, then, you know, unsubscribe. I don't care. I'm not making a dime off this. I've got, I've got enough subscribers and I've got enough of the watch hours and all that to be monetized, but I don't, I don't care. I'm not even, I'm not even fooling with it. Um, this is just something that I, I, I used to enjoy. I really used to enjoy getting on and seeing everybody else's knives and it would get me kind of excited to maybe go find a new knife myself and, and it kind of encourages you in that way. Um, not not to say that we have to keep up with the Joneses because that's that's a terrible thing to do. But you know, you you, you get to see other other people handling maybe a pattern that you've never um, handled, and, and it gets you maybe wanting to check one out. And that sort of encouragement is good. I think that's the good part about social media. And I've made a couple of excellent friends on uh, YouTube and Instagram and, and those places. But, um, but yeah, it's getting exhausting that every case video has turned into a nitpicky pissing and moaning. Um, I guess I just missed the days where we just showed a knife and, and, and that was basically it, you know. Um, if, if you have been so unlucky that every case knife you touch has been a turd, then stop by them. You know, if I, if I bought a case knife that was just an absolute joke, I guess I'd send it back and I wouldn't even make a video of it because Case isn't watching my videos. They don't know who I am. They don't care who I am. And they're definitely not gonna change their policy because some old hit country boy in uh, North Alabama said that, hey, y'all's knives suck, you know? Um, so anyway, I'm gonna let it go. I guess I'm kind of rambling and beating a dead horse at this point, but, um, but yeah. I just wondered if the knife collectors were kind of taking the fun out of it for anybody else besides me. Um, I just, uh, I just kind of wish it was a little simpler and it wasn't always a, a comparing or tearing down or whatever you want to call it. But anyway, yeah, guys, um, hope you enjoyed this. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Would you just assume see a knife and, uh, and check out a knife or do you want to know every single flaw that somebody has with it um let me know in the comments i appreciate the engagement and i'll try to respond but uh but yeah i guess another thought about it would be you know grandparents we i've talked about this before we all say hey we like these traditional knives because you know that's what my granddad carried or that's what my dad carried well if you if you stop and you think about it you probably never heard your granddad bitch about a gap in the back spring, or he probably never bitched about the blade being a little off center. I feel like everything's under a microscope now and it's kind of sad. Could Case do better? Absolutely. Should Case do better? Absolutely. But until then, get out and find creative ways to buy quality pieces. They're out there, guys. Everything on this table is a home run in my book. Um, and I want to say 
This one here is the only knife that I bought online. Everything else was picked up either firsthand or um, maybe on eBay where I was at least able to see, you know, good pictures of the knives themselves. So anyway, now I'm going to end it and I hope y'all have a great day.